This brightly colored artwork comes from uh, the state of Guerrero in Mexico. These are called amate bark paintings, and they are actually painted on the bark, the inner bark of a fig tree. There's a small little village in Guerrero where the bark paintings come from, and typically what they do is they represent everyday life in their village. They'll um, include people doing everyday chores. They'll include um, celebrations and festivities that may take place in the village. And they'll do pictures of people and animals and um, just the ordinary life that goes on in their small little village. They um, stack all the objects, which means that there really isn't um, a realistic perspective. It's just as if all the, the pieces are just stacked one on top of the other. They use really bright colors. They also use unusual size relationships. Um, they may have a big tree um, depicted as being small next to an animal that's actually larger than the tree. So they have unusual size relationships in their paintings. They also finish them off with a decorative little border and they use repetition of certain shapes and line patterns um, throughout the paintings. In addition to depicting the everyday life in their little village, they will also do um, paintings of kind of mythical, playful little animals with um, brightly colored flowers and like ferns or plant life. And these typically don't have a border because the border is kind of, it's kind of suggested by just the shape and the placement of um, the ferns and flowers. So we're going to um, create our own Amate bark painting. And there's actually two kinds of paper that you could use to kind of imitate the bark. You could use your craft paper that we've done in some other projects where you take like a brown paper bag or a piece of um, postal wrapping paper and you're going to crumble it up and you know flatten it out, crumble it, flatten it, crumble it until you start to get that cloth light feeling. And then you're going to take your iron and you're going to iron it flat. Um, that's one way. You can also, at an art store, purchase a paper or it's actually kind of a tag board thickness. It's called oil board. And it does a pretty good job of mimicking the effect that we get when you actually use the real bark paper. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll remove the inner bark from the fig tree and it gets soaked in water for a long period of time till it softens up and the fibers break down. And then they'll lay it in strips. And then it's pressed firmly so that all the fibers kind of mesh together. So we're going to go ahead and get started creating um, an Amate bark painting. And what you're going to need for this is your um, some kind of paper, either your craft paper or your oil board. You're going to need acrylic paint and some brushes, a pencil for sketching, a little cup of water, and you're going to need some paint markers. And last but not least, you're going to need some kind of a transfer paper. I already have a drawing here. I decided that um, I was going to do a bird and flower type drawing. and. What I'm going to do is set up um, my transfer paper here. Now, if you don't actually have white transfer paper, there's a real easy way to make your own. If you just take a piece of paper and you chalk the entire back side of it 
with white chalk or yellow chalk and then you lay the chalk side down on top of the paper that you're transferring to and then put your drawing on top you will be able to and I'll show you real quick how this works when you draw it transfers so I'm gonna go ahead and transfer my drawing and whenever you're using any kind of a transfer paper make certain that you really are drawing dark so that it all comes through the way you'd like it to come through Well, oh, you'll notice I'm making a few changes as, as I'm working, and that's perfectly all right. When you're the artist, you can make changes wherever, whenever, and however you want to. And what I'm trying to do here, basically, um, your drawing should almost look like um, uh, a coloring book drawing that's all outlined in black with shapes that can be easily colored in. Um, so when you're doing your drawing, keep that in mind that each of these shapes is going to be either painted in or um, colored in with a paint marker and we're actually going to outline everything in black because with the traditional amates everything's outlined in black and then filled in with bright colored paint okay um i finished tracing it and what i'm going to do next is take a black paint pen and i am going to outline over all my white lines. Okay, we're done with the outlining and now um, we're going to pick some colors. Bright, remember? Nice and bright. Um, they don't have to be realistic. Um, the leaves could be purple, they don't have to be green. So let's pick out some nice bright uh, amate colors. We can use white in there. So the large areas I'm going to actually paint, but then when we get into the feathers and the grapes and some of the leaves, I think I'm just going to go ahead and use the paint pens because it'll just it'll be more accurate and the two look identical so it doesn't matter so I'm gonna go ahead and start um, with this nice salmony color now when you're painting up next to your um, outlines I'll show you a trick which makes those nice clean edges a lot easier to um, to achieve. So if you let the brush, you drag the brush in the same direction the line goes, you can see what a nice clean edge you can get. And the harder you push down on the brush, the wider the area you can cover. If you don't press down too hard, it's going to be a narrower uh, brush stroke. So there we've got our salmon color. And of course, we want to repeat colors. 
so that things are balanced. So my suggestion is to always use a color oh, at least three to five times and spread them around the, um, the page. Now don't worry if you go over some of your black lines accidentally. After the paint's dry, you can come back and very carefully um, go over, fix some of your outlines with, uh, with the paint pen. And remember, the colors don't have to be realistic, so I'm actually making this branch the same salmony pink color. Okay, I'm gonna switch colors here and let's go to a lavender color here. All you really have to worry about is the placement of your colors so that you um, maintain balance I'm going to go ahead and um, start to use some paint markers because I want to spend a little time working on the feathers. A um, couple of tips when you're doing the paint pens or painting, you need to kind of be aware of what areas of your painting are actually still wet so that you don't accidentally um, put your hand or, you know, rub your, the edge of your hand or your fist or whatever across your painting. completed a mate bark painting. So I hope you guys have a lot of fun when you set out to do your own version of a mate bark painting. <laughs>